Hello and welcome everyone. Happy Wednesday. Here we are over on the We Crochet YouTube channel and Facebook page. It is so wonderful to have everybody starting to jump in. Good morning, Chris. It is great to see you as well, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're watching from. It is always wonderful to have you guys watching live or even watching the replay. We're still happy to have you there as well. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Caitlin, and I am the editor and marketing manager here at We Crochet. So I get to come here on a Wednesday and chat with you, tell you about new collections, things that are going on. On in the industry and just have a lot of fun and get to share things with you. So we're so excited. Hi, Julia. Hi, Heather. Hi, Lindsay. It is great to have you guys all here. As you're coming in, pop in, say hello, where you're watching from, maybe what you're working on. Have you checked out the new collection yet? Um, this is a special one because we are changing into one designer collections for a little bit. And this is kind of our first one. Well, actually, it's our second one, but we'll get to there in just a minute. But anyway, we have the designer here today who's going to help share with us all about the patterns. Plus, we've got Jen over in the studio at the office. She's going to be sharing with what's going on. But before we get there, there's a couple things I just want to remind you of. One, the monthly yarn sale this month is Wool of the Andes. So you can get any version of our Wool of the Andes for 20% off through the end of the month. So go ahead and check that out. And through the 25th of the month, we have a book bundle going on. The book bundle only applies to the books that we have printed from 2023. So there's 10 books as of right now. We've done one a month so far. So we have 10 books right now. There are buy two, get one free. Or excuse, buy three, get one free. Wow, I totally screwed that up. Buy three, get one free. It doesn't matter which one. It's only the print books that we've done. We have included um, Solstice and Shoreline, which were from the previous year, but because we printed them and they're exclusive to us, we're throwing them into the book bundle sale. But so you can go ahead and grab them. So we had our Winter Morning. We had our Alpine. We had our One Designer Collection with Brenda on Hooked on Socks. If you missed out, these did sell out on the website in the print copy. We brought them back so that they're available for the bundle. You can grab them. We also had Aviary featuring Brenda on the front cover. Um, we also had Spring Soiree. We had Set Sail. We had Out and About, A La Mode. We had Foliage. And now we have Granny Glow Up, which is what we're going to talk about today. But before we jump in there, I also want to share with you guys our brand new folio. I'm so excited about this. This is my baby. This is designed. We went through the whole process. And what we wanted to do is, oops, we made our books a smaller size compared to the magazine. And it was all around this plan of making this a really great way for you to keep your patterns um, and everything else. So when you open your folio, you have a nice little zipper pocket here. Hopefully I, nope, I have it upside down, guys. Sorry. It's hard when you're holding things up and trying to do this. When you open it, you've got a nice little zipper pocket here that you can put things in. In mine, I have my little sticky pad that is your project planner. So you have that with you to take some notes on. And when you open it up, it holds everything you need for your patterns. So in here we have our We Crochet Glossary card. Again, hard to do backwards. Hold on. Let me see if I can get this out. Our We Crochet Glossary card. So you have all your definitions. You can stick a ruler. You have your hook, your pencil. Um, there's a magnet up here for your stitch markers and darning needle. And then you've got these really great oops, elastic strips in here. Let me just fold this around. So right now I have a notebook in mine and a book. You could do two books in here. And also our new pattern format fits so that it goes right into here. And then if you slide it over just so, you can put your elastic band on the edge of your book so that it holds it open while you're working. And then you can add your post-it notes and things like that in there. I am so excited about this. I hope you guys are checking it out. I hope you guys are loving it. Um, you can grab it now. Oh, there's also a little pocket, a snap pocket on the back for your scissors and things like that. But you can grab this and grab your book bundle and you'll be all set for the next pattern that you want to do. Um, okay, so I did miss a couple people coming in. I think I said hi to Julia and Heather. If not, hi, hi. And Lindsay and we have Beach Girl and we have Dawn and Julia and Tamala and Evelyn and Deborah. Um, Will Wonder Fluff be on sale soon? Um, it is not scheduled to be on sale. I will tell you guys, though, 
that the our annual big sale is coming up. I don't know what colors of Wonder Fluff that are going to be included or if they're going to be included. I actually haven't looked at the document yet, but we do have that coming up. That would be your best chance um, in the near future for getting Wonder Fluff on sale. Okay, Evelyn, I'm going to answer your question in just a minute. I'm going to bring our wonderful guest in here. We have Brenda. Hi, Hi Brenda. Hi, Caitlin. So Brenda is the wonderful designer that we worked with for our new collection called Granny Glow Up. And today we've got a Brenda showcase going on. Um, so Evelyn is asking about the name of the sweater that I'm wearing. This is actually a swan show. Uh, I think that's what you would call it. This was from our big and little collection, and it is called the Taffy Swan Show. And so it's in adult sizes or kid sizes, and it's using Brava Tweed and then Brava Stripes in the yoke section here and then it goes back into just regular granny um stitching it's a nice like oversized extra layer love it love it love it love it this one back here is the hummingbird cardigan which was on the front cover of aviary this one was done in our city tweed dk mm -hmm. yep. yeah pretty sure dk that's, so that's another granny square pattern and then we're like brenda <laughs> do a whole collection <laughs> And I'm like, yep, already there. You don't have to talk me into it. <laughs> we have to say we love Brenda so, so much because Brenda is like our, I don't know, she just comes in clutch for us all the time. Like whenever we're like, Brenda, we need a little help. She's like, yep, here you go. And I'm like, oh my God, Brenda, this is amazing. <laughs> and I mean, look at this. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. I, I just... I don't know. You can't go wrong when it's Brenda pattern. I mean, Aww, thank you. We will put in a link to all of her patterns, but there are so many wonderful ones. Like the Blythe cable pullover, that one is stunning with the cables in it. It is so, so wonderful. Thank you. Um. Okay. Let me just double check that we're not missing anything. Oh, yes. The folio. No, there are no tools that come with it. You would add those in yourself, whatever you have, but it will fit those different pieces. Um, we do have all the tools on the website that you could get them individually if you wanted to. Juan said, hi, Brenda. Hi. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is so great. So we're going to talk about the Granny Glow Up collection. We're going to bring Jen in in just a minute. But the premise behind the Granny Glow Up, well, first of all, we called it Glow Up because Glow Up means, you know, like to come back, to bring it really beautiful and, you know, a transformation. And I don't know about you, Brenda, but when I hear granny squares or a lot of people hear granny squares, you think really old scratchy wool or scratchy yarn that sits on a couch that's just a blanket. And that's not what it is. Right. I remember thinking, I remember feeling that way about granny squares when I first started crocheting. Like, well, when I kind of like came back into crocheting in my 20s, I remember feeling like, like I think probably out of my mouth maybe came the words. But crochet doesn't have to be like icky, scratchy granny squares. Like I probably said something horrible like that. And now like, look at me. I love granny squares so much. It's like totally different now. I just feel like yeah. completely different about the granny square. <laughs> yeah, they're so great. And you know, too, what you'll notice in this book is it's not just the traditional granny. So the cardigan that Brenda's wearing is the same cardigan that we have here. These are the traditional granny squares, but we're going to show you a lot of other things um that are going on so Lindsay said I thought that same way or I felt the same way forever but my mind is changing <laughs> yes granny squares are back they're better than ever and they're so different and so modern and inside this book you're actually going to find let me just turn the page here you're going to find four squares so you have the traditional square you have a sunburst square you have a spark square and a solid square, and you'll get the directions for each of those. And when you work the pad the squares in this book, they're all supposed to come out to the same size at the end. So you can mix and match. So if you love this cardigan, but maybe you don't want to go with the traditional granny square, you could change out the sunburst granny square um, for all of these grannies, and it'll work out perfectly because they were designed that using the yarn and the same hook, you're supposed to end up with your squares exactly the same size, no matter which square you pick. So you can interchange any of these projects with any one of the four squares that come in this book. So there are five total patterns in the book, four squares. Are you ready to jump into it? <laughs> Just talking about my stuff, you mean? 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, I want to thank Caitlin for this idea of swapping out the squares because she is the one who had that idea. Like, wouldn't it be cool? It'd be like a choose your own adventure granny square situation, which is awesome. Such a good idea. And for me, like I just like the more eclectic, the better. That's just kind of my aesthetic. And I, but I do, you know, like one of my best crochet friends, her name's Molly, actually. She was a sample maker for that yes. um, next to you. She has a more toned down aesthetic. And we always, we like, as long as I've been like hardcore crocheting, she ha she and I have always talked about like what we like, what we don't like. And so in my mind, she represents the, the crocheters that like it a little bit more toned down, likes things to match, likes things to be yeah. symmetrical, you know, maybe a little bit, not monochromatic, but like, you know, the, the, the cardigan next to you, those kind of colors more so than these kind of mixy matchy, yeah. but like, I can't, so I had those two aesthetics in my mind when I was thinking about this and thinking, oh, it'd be cool. Like if it, if I was making this for myself, I would take all the different granny squares and put them in one sweater. Like I would not only and just pop them out, but I would like take, you know, take all of them, make them super yeah. random looking, use a bunch of leftover yarns and just like, that's, that's kind of me. And then I feel like, and then, but I wanted to make sure that all the designs were like approachable and would be liked by somebody who has an aesthetic a little bit more like Molly, who, who, <laughs> Um, you know, doesn't want it quite so wild and crazy and wants a little bit more right. down and like, you know, a little bit more to her taste, you know? So I like using her, like what I imagine her perspective is, of course, um, to help me sometimes when I'm designing, because I like to, you know, sometimes I go a little further down the eclectic lane and I'm like, okay, I got to bring this back. Would Molly like this also? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. It, it Molly is here. She is commenting over in the chat so molly's here she's checking it all out so we're excited to have her here today too awesome hi molly <laughs> yeah so like brenda was saying so if when you start looking through the book you're going to notice that there's two except for the front cover but that's okay there's two samples of every pattern so we have the brenda color and we have the we crochet color and both of them are equally beautiful but mm -hmm. brenda definitely went with more bright colors rainbow colors and we tried to like keep it into smaller rainbows and, you know, tonal things. And so you can see the big difference. Like Brenda's using a bunch of colors. We're using the same number of colors in ours, but like mm -hmm. this one, we really stayed with the blues and the purples um, in here instead of kind of spreading the entire rainbow. And it's just a completely different look from the same pattern. Mm -hmm. As Brenda was saying too, you could mix and match these squares. They don't all have to be the same. That's just how we did it for the sample. And also consider you don't have to make it this many colors. If you just want the center to be a different color and then all the rest to be the same, or maybe you do like one or two like random patchworks that are multiple colors and the rest are all just like a plain gray. There's so many different things you can do with this to make it your own. Mm -hmm. Love it. Um, there is a thing, and Maria is saying that she loves the idea of having the granny square options. It gives a lot of incentive to make a pattern more than once. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's the same pattern that you're using, but it can look completely different mm -hmm. just by changing up the colors or the squares that you're using for each project that you have. Yes, Lindsay, individual um, patterns will be on sale. So you can get it in the print book, you can get it in an ebook, or you can get each of the patterns individually caveat when it's individual so let's just speak about this one since it's here in this individual pattern you are only going to get the information for this square that was used in the sample so if you want to get all four squares that are used you need to get the print book or the ebook and honestly they're both a better price compared to buying each pattern individually then you'll have all four squares and you can switch it out as however you want Yes, we have some kits. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, first one in the book. Well, we should also say that for this collection, we used Brava and we used Wool of the Andes. So grab your Wool of the Andes, 20% off to go ahead and make these because anything that was done in Brava, we could switch out with Wool of the Andes or vice versa. They're very similar in the weight of the yarn. Um, so they're really great. So the first one we have here is the Pippi headband and hopefully Jen can hear us. There she is. She's going to bring it up. So Brenda, I'm just going to make Jen a little bit bigger so okay. that we can see it, but we're going to okay. still talk about it. So tell us what the square is on the Pippi headband. Oh, me. That is the sunburst square. 
Um, and that one is the most like solid of all of the squares. So that that's the other cool thing about this collection is that they they kind of range in how um, how much air they might let through or how solid they are. And this one, I, because it's an ear warmer, I wanted to make sure that you know it was going to actually be warm on your ears in this example. But if you want to wear it more like just like a headband, like you're having a bad hair day kind of situation, or you have a messy bun going on. Then you can choose one of the other stitch patterns that are like a little bit more airy, like the spark square um, has more holes between the stitches. So it's it's not I wouldn't say it's necessarily lacy, but just like a touch of just a teensy bit lacy, you know, compared to to that one. Right. So. And like is OK, so Jen is now showing the spark square, oh, yeah. which we'll get to mm -hmm. in just a minute. And you can see it is a little bit bigger. So this is also the sunburst square here. And so you can see I did mine in two colors just for the tutorial sake. And when Jen holds it up, look at how different it looks. Mm -hmm. The way Brenda designed it, where there's one, two, three, four colors being used versus just two. So there's so much that can happen just by changing the colors that you're using um, mm -hmm. to make it look so different. I mean, because the samples definitely look more like a flower to them than maybe this mm -hmm. one does, but they're all equally beautiful. Um, yeah, I should, found, oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, I found when I was working on this, that, um, that second to the last round that you do makes in, you know, depending on the color you choose makes a huge difference in how it looks, mm -hmm. especially for that sunburst one, because they, that's what makes the, just because I did the second to the last round in that dark green, um, you know, it may, it really makes the circle show up a lot more, but, right. it, but in your sample, you have the second to the last round in that lighter color, the brighter color. Yeah. This so one here. it's kind of like you see the square and you also see the circle. It's not just like a circle on, on a background. Right. That makes sense. <laughs> right. But I noticed that especially for the, for the starboard square and also for the spark square, those two, especially like, I mean, or even this one, like because we did the second to the last round in that gray it's like it looks like a smaller granny square than it actually is because you right. your eye starts to just blend all the backgrounds of the squares together if that makes right sense. and i mean that you'll notice that throughout that that's kind of what we did is that last round we made all the same colors so it becomes very seamless here you know it's the gray here you see it in jen where the one is the gray the one is the green you'll start to notice that as we go through and it really just does make it a little bit more seamless mm -hmm. um in what you're doing and you don't notice this last round that is there in the granny mm -hmm. square but if you um, wanted the different four sizes of that headband available so it's going to cover a lot of different people in your family or whatever you want to do um and it's just really great. We also have in there, Jen, if you could show the front real quick, it's that twisted um, knot, I guess you want to call it. So we did put a um, photo in here, tutorial on exactly how to do that so you can follow along and not have a problem with getting yours together. And yeah, it's just really great. Was there anything else you wanted to chat about on that one? I don't think so. I mean, it's just that that one is just extra fun because especially if you are like not quite sure how much time you have, you know, really <laughs> making those little granny squares. OK, the other thing about this collection, every time you make a granny square, you get a little moment of ah oh, completion. Like you, yes. you know, it's like you're constantly feeling like you're completing little parts of it as you go, which is great. Um, but that headband is so fast. It's like you can just try out one of each of the squares and then right. you and that, you know, they could be your, your swatches even, and then sew them together yeah. and you have a headband all of a sudden, you know? So it's kind of right. like, you know, something from nothing. <laughs> yeah. And I love it too, because you really can use your leftovers from any of these other projects mm -hmm. to go ahead and make either a matching, a complimentary, something like that headband that's going to go really, really great. Yeah. Okay. So let's bring Jen back in and let's show off the next one, which is called our GG Cow. This one is available as a kit. So we have two kit options, one in the blue um, that we did as our color and one in these really bright colors that Brenda did. Um, so let me bring Jen up a little bit bigger so she can see. I love this one so much. And the reason I love this so much, um, A, I love the square. It's really great. It's very simple because it's the solid granny square. But... This is done in a tubular fashion so that when you seam it all together, it makes a tube. So it's a double thickness. Mm -hmm. So it's going to keep you so nice and warm when you're wearing this, but it does not 
lose the drape of, you know, a great cowl project. Like it's so drapey. It's going to keep you warm. It's not stiff. Do you want to say anything about this one, Brenda? Well, this is the one that I'm probably going to wear the most. Well, I don't know. This <laughs> It's so hard to pick, but I really... There's, I have this thing about making cowls where I, I really, it really bugs me if the top of the cowl looks kind of flimsy or mm -hmm. thin. And so I always put like, like a rolled hem kind of thing or a thicker hem, or in this case, it is just like a tube that goes onto the inside. So it has that sturdy feel on the top edge. So it isn't just sort of, when you put it on, it isn't just sort of poking out to the side, doing something weird or showing right. you something on the inside of the cowl that doesn't look as good. Like right. just one of those things where you can just throw it on and it'll look good. You don't have to be all fussy about it. <laughs> yeah. And I love it too, because it really is seamless the way that it is because, you know, you're putting it together. You, you have seams. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. You have seams where you're putting your squares together, but because of the way that it folds together, you really don't know where it stops and where it yeah. ends. Like there's no wrong side. Like you can flip it right. out like Jen just did and it looks great either way. And I also uh, in particular, <laughs> just really like the patchworkiness of the contrast color. That's seams them together you can see in the, yeah. the close-up there it just like gives it a little bit more of like a handmade vibe that I just really really wanted to have for this collection just that kind of feeling of like somebody's hands made this for you or for right. yourself <laughs> yeah I love it and you can definitely see the double thickness because those squares along the top row there are actually like folded over um mm -hmm. so it's half a square but really you're all it's all you're like you don't have to worry about making half a square for this you're making yeah. full squares all around and i just love it so much i think it's going to be the perfect like winter accessory that everybody's going to want to love you could make it longer too if you mm -hmm. want by adding some more squares in you'd have to kind of figure it out a little bit by yourself um, but you could alter the size of it as well if you really wanted to yep you definitely could yeah so we love that one so much so it does come in two kits that you can go ahead and grab and make whichever color or go shop and find the colors that fit perfectly for you. Um, okay, the next one that we have is that beautiful pullover right there that Jen has. And we called this, should say too, we really tried with the names here to pick names of um, what people are calling their grandmothers because this is a connection to the past. This is a connection to what we associate with you know, those past generations of when they said crochet, this is all they were doing was granny squares. And so we really wanted to show that you can be connected to the past and, you know, the history of this craft, but in a brand new modern way that we keep pushing this um, craft forward to keep making it for new, more and more people to love and enjoy it. So we love this one because this one is worked side to side in the body section and then your granny squares are only on your sleeves. So this makes it a versatile piece that gives you some um, size options uh, that you can do. And really the granny squares, you only have to make so many of them because they're just on the sleeve. You want to tell us a little bit about this one, Brenda, where you thought about this one or what you were thinking? Well, like you said, like I want it. Okay. So I wanted to have one that a granny square sweater that was a little bit more toned down instead of like so much pattern going on just to make sure because there, there are some people who aren't comfortable wearing quite as much pattern. But of course, you know, if you make it and, you know, if I made this sweater in fewer colors, it wouldn't look so patterny. But I want I did want to have something that had a very solid body. And in my mind, when I designed this, I thought, OK, this is like what I would wear and put that cowl on over it yes so i have this backdrop of just solid you know very you know just a solid body and then the granny squares and the sleeves but then i would layer on that cowl that we were just looking at kind of just to add it together like i actually made my samples my versions out of the same exact yarn the same colors and everything so they would go together <laughs> so i really wanted to just have those together but the other thing that i particularly am proud of in this sweater is the the little tiny details and the edging of the like where mm -hmm. I seamed the pieces together, I use that. I use the seam for for two things. One to make it a little more sturdy because that ribbing fabric kind of wants to stretch out. So I knew I needed to have a seam there, and I wanted it to be fairly substantial. But then I also wanted it to be like an extra little detail since the body was going to be so plain. I really wanted to bring just like a little bit of a handmade extra, you know. 
I don't want to say decoration, but like a little bit, I, I zazzed it up right. just a little bit along those edges just to kind of uh, make it a little bit more fun. And then the the sleeve hem ties that in as well. The very edging on the, the sleeve has that same kind of, um, it's just all it is is really stitching and then whip stitching through um, right. your, your single crochet stitches. So it just gives it that nice, I don't know, it almost looks like purchase trim or something on yeah. the edge of it, you know. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, as you can see here, this is Brenda's version with the bright colors here. This is our version that Jen is showing you. And you can see what a difference it makes in like a more subtle, tonal type of piece versus really bringing in those bright colors. They're both beautiful. And again, think about it this way. If you don't want to bring that much attention to it, work the squares in one color. Mm -hmm. You can make them that same green color that we're using for the main part of the sweater. You'll still see the texture when you're up mm -hmm. close to it and see the square, but it's not going to make as much of a showy, like, look at me type of thing mm -hmm. on the pattern. You have so many options. And as Brenda was saying, Jen, can you grab the Gigi Cal again and throw it on with the pullover? Um, this is a really great way to wear those two pieces together. They go well or go together so well. Now, the Gigi pullover is done in the solid granny square and the Mimi pullover is done with the spark granny square. And obviously for us, we picked two different colors where Brenda's matched a lot better because um, she was using that same color palette throughout. You can do it with two different granny square styles or maybe you make the cowl in the spark granny square so that they really match and it, you know, pulls it all together. Like there's so many different options of what you could do there. I love the idea of doing the different granny square styles, but using the same colors. So if we mm -hmm. use the same colors that you did on the pullover, but pull it up into the cowl, I think that would be really great as well. Even if you're using different color, excuse me, different squares mm -hmm. between the, the colors cowl and the seat. Tie it together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> um, okay. So then the next one, and I should say too, all of the patterns have charts in them that tell you the color order that you're supposed to be making things in if you want it to match what we did. So we use the same color order that Brenda did on all of the squares. We just use different. You're going to want to follow the charts if you want to get that same look of like how often you're changing. And so for instance, you know, these are the colors that we used here. So this is going to get you based off of the charts that are in the book. Feel free to change it up if that's not what you like or it's not working out the way you want. Do it how you want. But that's just to give you what we have in the samples. Yeah, that okay. was something that I was... Sorry, can I just say... Go ahead. Okay, that was something that I was really proud of is that how I came up with the, a sort of system for helping people work through their colors so they don't have to... They Once they pick their colors they don't have to figure out, okay, where am I changing mm -hmm. colors? Have I used this one how many times? And then at the end, when you have all these squares, I have a map for you so you can lay it all out. So if you are a person who just like wants somebody else to take care of those sort of logistics for you, then it's all mapped out for you. You just have to choose, you know, the colors that you want to work with. Then you plug them in, you number them, um, plug them in, and I will, you know, we tell you in the pattern exactly where to change colors, how many squares of this and this and this, and then where to put them in the yeah. layout. So it, it just helps for people who are, you know, kind of shy away from doing these types of projects because they're like, oh, I can't do that much color choosing. It's too much. Like, I just want to figure it out that that part of it has been taken care of, taken care of for you if, if, if that's the way you want to do it. But of course, if you're the kind right. of person who wants to, you know, use your scraps, you want to figure it out yourself, of course, you can do that too. So. Yeah. Um, Molly also chimed in here saying, I like the way you can show different personalities through the colors that are chosen 100%. And that's what we really wanted to empower you with in this collection, which again, this one's called Granny Glow Up. Um, Jean will get another link in there for you. But the whole point of this was to take things of the past, bring them into the modern day and really allow you to express yourself through the crochet that you're making. So whether it's picking a different square for a project, whether it's picking all different colors, whether it's going just all the same color, like you can do what's gonna make you happy and make you proud to wear what's going on. So mm -hmm. we love it. 
the next one we have is the birdie card again. I don't know. This is one of my favorites. I love, love a true granny square. Like give them to me all day long. I love them. Um, so here I have the version that we did in our colors. Brenda is wearing the version that she did with her color palette. And I love it. I just love it. And I think the thing that I love the most about this one, so I really liked the Mimi pullover because the squares were just on the sleeve. I love this one for the exact same opposite reason mm -hmm. that the squares are only on the body and this is more of a solid piece. Now, they're striping. You don't have to do the stripes. You can mm -hmm. do this all gray if you want to and just make it solid. Personally, I think the color really just ties it all together and I love it. But again, it's still using the three uh, three double crochet cluster of a traditional granny square, but just in a different way. You could use a totally different square and you could then, maybe you don't want to have the striping in here to show the difference. Maybe you do. There's so many different ways that you can do it. Just like this one is the granny, um, what, what do you even call it? Because it's not a granny square, the granny stitch. Granny stitch yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So I love it. So why don't you tell us a little bit about this one? What made you decide to go with not the squares in the sleeves and everything else and kind of how this one all came together? Oh, before we do that, guys, this is the best part too about this one. Brenda has designed it that it snaps behind your buttons. So you're not making buttonholes. You're just seaming or you're just sewing your buttons on and sewing a snap on the back. We're in the process of getting snaps because Brenda likes to do this. And so we need to provide the snaps for this. So we're working on getting snaps um, coming in just for you guys because it's really such a great idea. I love it. Thank you for accommodating me and my snap love. I just, I love using snaps on the front closure of sweaters because it, especially like when you're working, I really like to put big buttons on my sweaters and we've got yeah. those big buttons. You need kind of a big buttonhole and sometimes it can get stretched out and sometimes it moves off to the side and yeah. the snaps really keep the button centered and it keeps, mm -hmm. you know, your when you put it together, it is, it is stuck there. It's not going to be sliding around. Plus there is the whole added thing of like, as you're stitching it up, if you feel like your ribbing needs to be a little shorter or longer before you mm -hmm. sew it on, you can alter that. And that is not going to mess with like, if you put buttonholes in it, then that's right. going to, you know, if you stretch that out or move it, it might do something weird to the front of your sweater. Like it's just, it makes it foolproof to put the buttons on. You don't have to worry about the buttonholes. It's just so easy. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, and we'll give you a sneak peek. Brenda's going to have another collection with us coming up. It's also going to to have snaps behind the buttons so you're going to start seeing this a lot more um you know brenda brings to us a lot of these great ideas i mean this is not like reinventing the wheel this is just using what we have in a smarter way i mean brenda brought to us seeking with the dandelion cardigan she's brought so many things over into the crochet world that we're using already in the sewing industry we're using already on the knitting side of things mm -hmm. It just works perfectly here in crochet too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like why not use it for crochet? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. So um, should I talk about the sweater now? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. So, no, that's okay. So when I was designing that, I was playing around with whether I wanted to use the squares throughout or mm -hmm. if I wanted to do the striping. And I did some like different sketches of it. And I thought, you know, I really, I just really like to break things up and have multiple things going on. So I decided I wanted to stripe it. It took me a little while. And this just seems so simple, but it took me a little while to figure out that if I did two rows of the granny stripe in the gray and then the color and then two rows in the gray and then the color, that it looks so much different than if I did every other because yep. of the way that the, those little three double crochets things line up. And I, loved, right. I just loved how it looked when I striped it like that because it almost looks like the kind of I don't know, they fit together and there's this little zigzag of gray yeah. in between these little, it almost looks like thick stitches or something of right. the colors in between, like this thick whip stitch going on. Right. If you look at it with blurred eyes from far away, that's what it looks right. like. <laughs> but I just, I just really like, to me, when I saw that, when I finally did that stitch pattern and saw it, how it was working up, I was like, this is the stuff I want. I just, I liked right. how it looked like, again, it just looked really handmade and I don't know, really stitchy. I know that's not yeah. a word, but to me, it just looked really good in those, the combination right. of the sleeves with the body. And then also there was the added practicality. Once you do the granny, like if you, if you're making sleeves and grant with granny squares, you're a little bit limited in the length of the sleeves because mm -hmm. you have, you have to decide how many granny squares you want in a row. 
And then you can't fine tune the length of your sleeve at that point. Right. So I was like, I, I want to have one sweater like that because we're using the granny square sleeves in the other sweater, which mm -hmm. you can fine tune, you can fine tune the length of the whole thing by making the body wider or narrower right. of the other sweater. So it's not, it's not like you're going right. to end up with sleeves too long, sleeve too short. There are ways around that. But for this cardigan with these squares, how they're connected in the body, I was like, I just want to have it be easy to, for people to alter the sleeve length if they want to have, you know, just to yeah. make sure that they get exactly the right length. So I love it. I love the look so much because, you know, I think too, if, you know, we're talking that comparison between yonder years and now, um, in the past, you would have seen it all over granny. You would have seen it all the way to the sleeve. And I just think this kind of steps it up a notch mm -hmm. and kind of elevates the way that it is. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Thanks. <laughs> um, so then the last pattern in the collection is called the Oma Blanket. And what we, or what Brenda did here is she took the four squares and she put them all together into one blanket pattern. I'm going to bring Jen back in because she's got a sample for us to see. Let me Can I say one thing about yeah. the cardigan before we move to the blanket? Sure, go ahead. I too am a lover of a giant button, but on a knitted fabric, they tend to make the sweater fall forward. And mm -hmm. so adding that snap to the back stabilizes the button in the front. And so you don't have that issue. So right. I don't know why I never thought about putting snaps on it, but it's brilliant and I love it. And I'm doing it on everything now. So we <laughs> love it too. Again, the little things that you just don't always think about until somebody's like, oh yeah, why aren't we doing this? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just, it stabilizes the giant button and I do love a giant button. Yeah, yeah, me too. I love that aesthetic of the giant buttons. You're totally right though, Jen. It just, it keeps your button from flopping, flopping mm -hmm. around on there. It gives it that nice stable back. Yep. It's yep. got like many uses. <laughs> <Snap>. <laughs> All right, so Brenda, why don't you tell us a little bit about this one? Because you're going to notice, everybody, this does use the four different squares, but uh, the color kind of gradient as you go through in the rainbow that we have here. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how this blanket works and kind of where you thought about pulling the colors from? Because you don't have to follow this color order, but I think it looks pretty great. So, yeah, so I, I really wanted to make a sort of gradient feeling blanket with these granny squares because I knew, knowing me, I wanted to use all the squares, okay? And so I, I wanted to put them all in there, but I wanted to have some sort of unifying thing that makes your eye just travel across the blanket and it looks like one cohesive thing instead of um, figuring out little, um, I just, I just, that's just the kind of look I was going for instead of all, you know, figuring out how to mix in all those different uh, stitch patterns. So I thought, okay, if I have it kind of be this slow gradient, but I do color mixing kind of as I go, like I didn't want to have, you know, this is the red square. This is the orange square. This is the yellow square. This is, the, I really wanted to mix in an, every square. I wanted it to have multiple colors and kind of be a slower changing thing and look a little bit, um, oh, I don't, I, I don't want to say organic, but like, look like it changes a little bit more. Mm, I, I don't know. I don't even know the words for it, but like, look, it looks like it changes slowly and without like super clear pattern in your, like, I didn't want you to say, be like, oh, there's that square. There's that square again, right. exactly right there. Like, I just wanted it to look like it was all kind of melding together and just being this gradient and having yeah. all the color mixing going on throughout the whole thing. So I mapped out, um, you know, how to change your colors, exactly where, where to change them, what colors mm -hmm. to use in the squares, and then where to put those squares at the end. So, yeah. you you know, and if you're not interested in doing these rainbow colors, you can definitely do a gradient that's like a little bit more tonal. Like you could pick Right. All blues and grays, maybe, or blues, grays and whites yep. or something like that. You you don't have to, they don't have to be the rainbow colors. If you're not into that or, you know, look at your home decor and then like pick out a couple of colors that are in that and then build your colors around that and then maybe right. put in some neutrals, you know, and then right. when you're choosing what order to put them in, line them up in the order that you see the gradient. 
when you have mm-hmm. those gains and match them up with, you know, your numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, I can't remember where there's seven colors. And then the nine, and the contrast, nine. nine. Okay. <laughs> but you know, if you lie, if, if you choose your colors in that way, you know, you don't have to look for one, which is the one that looks the most like the red. It doesn't matter. You just like line them all up in your gradient, like whatever you see is your gradient. And then when you go through my pattern, um, you'll be able, it, it'll basically tell you how to make this color mixing right. happen and how to make it, your whole blanket look like a gradient. So, right. So yes, there are nine colors in this blanket. So you could pick any nine colors. They could be real tonal. They could be totally rainbow. They could be kind of anything that you want. Um, there's one main color and then there's eight of the contrast colors. So the main color in this blanket that Jen is showing is that dove heather. And then you've got eight other colors that we're playing with in it. And in the pattern, it does tell you, let me just get the exact wording here, how we did it. So what we did is we said colorway one, and then what it did was it told you how to make a solid, the clap, like it tells you exactly the square you're doing and then what each round color should be. So it's all worked out. And then it tells you how many to make of that particular color and square so that it can repeat and everything else. Um, And then there is a chart also in the very end here that says, okay, here was square one that you made. Here's where it's going to go. And then tells you exactly how to lay it out so that you can get the same look that you're seeing right here in the sample. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. I I, I don't know what else to say. Um, You know, Jen, all right, I'll take you down. Unless Jen, do you want to say anything else about the collection? No, I love it. It's great. I do want to also say that we are doing a um, in-house crochet along because we love your patterns. Aww. So we're doing a crochet along using um, a granny square, your hummingbird cardigan. Oh, awesome! Because um, we love the we love the granny square, um, <laughs> but people were not ready to do an entire granny square sweater. Mm-hmm. Although I think somebody might. So who knows? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I like about the hummingbird cardigan because it's like it's a very grown up use of the granny square. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you know, it just it's more subdued and it's I mean, even though I chose the brighter colors in that yarn, um, it still has a look of like to, in my it was so funny when you guys when I first saw the pictures and there was somebody I think they had a book in their hand or maybe they're in front of a book or I don't know it had like this weird like library vibe kind of thing going on which is what I was thinking about when I picked the colors and when I work I think anytime I'm working with tweed I get this like you know old library like cool library old library kind of vibe going on and that's kind of what I was thinking of in the sweater like I like um I don't know if you guys ever watched Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but there's this character in there, Giles, who's like the librarian guy. He's like this nerdy librarian, but he wears lots of tweed and like, I don't know. There's just something about that aesthetic and the smell of old books that I just <laughs> love so much. <laughs> and I never thought that I, I would it. be able to get that with a granny square, but somehow it mm-hmm. works. Like, <laughs> Right. And it just shows you the difference too. Like this is a tweed yarn. Um, and this is just like a regular, This I think this one was done in Brava, uh, just a regular. And look at how different it looks. It definitely gives it a, uh, an air of sophistication when you go with a tweed yarn. Yeah. You could do these patterns in tweed yarns too if you want to. Yeah. Grab Brava tweed. That'll be a great substitute. The color palette is more limited in Brava tweed, although we did bring out nine new colors this year. Um, but, you know, you could still do... The same thing, maybe not as many colors, but it's going to give you that different look. I mean, here we brought in the Brava Tweed here with this, you know, beautiful gold color. Again, gives it a totally different vibe than going straight up rainbow colors that you might think of more for a kid. Um, So you can really play around with what's going on to make this the perfect piece for you and your wardrobe. Okay, I'm going to remove Jen for a minute. There are some questions that are in here that I just want to make sure we go over. Um, Julia was wondering, is the blanket join as you go? It is not, but you could choose to do that with an additional round, uh, you know, or with the last round, you could do that. But I felt like it was kind of too complicated with all the color scheme and everything going on to orchestrate that whole thing because right. it's so, it matters so much exactly where you put all those squares. And I really liked having at the end, <clears throat> even though we tell you where to put every square it's like you're putting every color scheme in a certain spot but you can Mm -hmm. move around which stitch pattern 
worked in that right. color scheme is in that slot. It's kind of hard to right. explain, but um, that way you have a little bit of control over where those pieces go. So yes. normally I like to do join as you go kind of situations because, you know, doing all the sewing at the end. I, I mean, I don't mind it, but I think it's not most people's favorite thing to do. Right. Um, but I think in this case, this blanket, just because 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 of the <clears throat> color patterning that's going on, it just keeps it a little bit simpler if you can do it all at the end. And then you can lay it all out and make sure everything is really in the right spot that you want it to be in. Yeah. I mean, I get the point or I get the desire for join as you go because yes, it's a little less seeming at the end and everything else. But the thing about it is, is unless you're doing it where your join as your go round is this solid color on the outside for everything. It's nice to be able to move things around. Mm -hmm. It's nice to be able to look at it as a whole when you lay it out and be like, yes, that's exactly what I like or yeah. I want before you seem things. Because when you're doing join as you go, you're kind of just joining as you're you go and you're getting what you get don't. in that order. And if you don't like it, then you've got to rip the whole thing back out. Yeah. And that's kind of a problem. Plus it's nice. Really. I really like the portability of granny squares, you know, mm -hmm. just being, if you're doing join as you go, you're ending up you know, as you make the thing, you're adding it to the blanket every time. So you have to have that blanket right. with you to put it together <laughs> as you right. go. But, you know, I really, I just, I really like having the portability of just being able to, you know, bring a little bit of yarn with me, make some squares wherever I'm at, put them in my stack. Right. But I do, I do want to suggest to people, try really hard to weave in your ends as you complete each square. Unless you're the kind of person who loves weaving in ends because, um, it just, you know, it takes a while at the end to weave in yeah. all those ends. It can be a little bit overwhelming. So, or maybe do it in batches. Like once you get that's what I usually end, do. Weave them all in. Yeah, um, you'll thank yourself at the end. <laughs> yeah, you do that. Um, a lot of the patterns too are telling you to whip stitch things together mm -hmm. or seam it in your favorite manner. Something you can do, especially like on the cardigan, because you're not really going to see the back of it. You could single crochet things together. You're yeah. not going to get as flat of a look, you're going to get like a little bit of a ridge in between them, but it does make it go a little bit faster. If you're okay with that look to it, um, you could consider single crocheting them together mm -hmm. or slip stitching them together or you on can, the wrong side. Or there's, there's a zigzag join. I don't know if you've ever done that, Caitlin, yes. but it, yeah, that's crocheting back and forth and that, mm -hmm. that helps it lay nice and flat. So I'd recommend okay. that if you're just like, oh, I don't want to sew all that stuff. If you, if you want, yeah. would rather crochet it, then look into doing the zigzag join between your pieces that would that uh, that would be how I would do it if I wasn't going to whip stitch. I I like whip stitching them together though. Yeah, I don't mind it, but crazy. um we also wanted to call out our brand new snap bag that we have which is perfect for granny squares. So this one only has 3. This can hold up to 8 balls or 8 different colors of yarn and then you just pull the yarn right here through the top snaps and then snap Ooh. it up so it keeps your colors separated but different rounds of what you're doing and then this you could just throw right into your everyday tote it fits perfectly we love this so so much and it's perfect for this whole granny square collection we brought it in um specifically for this so that you could organize all your different colors of what you're working on while you're working so we love that that's a really great option and accessory for working granny squares yeah so. that's awesome for color work I mean, I do a lot of color work projects and I'm just imagining how nice that would be. <laughs> yeah. You have it all organized like that. And yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's our whole granny glow up collection. We are so excited to have Brenda join us for this collection and design an entire collection for us. Um, as we said before, this is the only other collection that we have one designer. And guess what? It was Brenda. She did a sock <laughs> collection for us in the beginning of the year. Now we have her granny glow up collection that we have. So you want to go check it out. Again, we have it available in a print book. We have it available in an ebook, and we do have it available in individual patterns if you want. The ebook and the print book, though, you will get all four square patterns that you can mix and match. In the individual patterns, you will only be getting the square pattern that the sample was made in. It was just the easiest way for us to do it. So again, if you want all four squares, grab the print book or the ebook. And right now, you can buy three of our print books and you get one free. So you might as well go ahead and grab all of Brenda's books and patterns that we've got going on with her. So thank you, Brenda, for taking your time and sharing the collection with everybody. We love it. We love all of your patterns. Guys, we're going to keep going back to Brenda. Whatever she wants to do, whatever she wants to make, it's a yes from us. 
We're like, yeah, please bring me us whatever you want. You got it. <laughs> well, I love working with you guys. And it's always so fun to chat with you and Jen and everybody out there. I really appreciate you guys having me. So yeah. yeah. Thanks so much. And don't forget, all the links will be in there if you're watching the replay. They're in the chat. They'll also be down in the bottom um, so that you can go ahead and shop the collection um, and the other things like the folio and the snap bag that we've all been talking about today. So have a great week. We will not be here next week. We're taking a week off, um, but then we'll be back the following week with another wonderful broadcast. So we'll see you then. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Bye.